Good evening and welcome. Welcome winners. Winners, how's it going? Did you have a good day on the daytime version of LinkedIn today? I hope you were very productive. Yes, indeed. Not on there talking about politics and getting triggered and uh, arguing with people about different religions and things that probably work much better at the bar. <laughs> Instead, well, that might not be so good. That might not end very well either. But anyway, welcome to Win with Attraction Marketing for Empowerment Entrepreneurs. So I have, and is my hat just right? Oh, well, whatever. Um, I changed the name again. I shortened it because at first I had Win, win with Attraction Marketing for Personal Empowerment Entrepreneurs. Now we're just empowerment entrepreneurs. That's all we need because what we do is we empower individuals, we power startups, we start, we, we empower, we empower. And you know what? I, I went back to recording because that way I could put it through YouTube and then bring it out through onto LinkedIn as well as other social media. Even though LinkedIn and YouTube are probably going to be my main two uh, social media platforms, you know, I just listened to, oh, oh, I have to go back and get his name. It's him and his brother. And he talked about um he talked about trying to chase two rabbits, too many rabbits. So I'm gonna change the story because it's an old parable. Not a parable, like a um like a myth or a fairy tale or a, a tale and um a fable. Yes, that's what it is, a fable um, about chasing too many animals at the same time, too many rabbits. Because if you're chasing Mr. Instagram, Cottontail, and then you're chasing after Mr. YouTube, and you're chasing after Mr. Facebook, and you're chasing after Mr. LinkedIn, and you're chasing after Mr. TikTok, and you're chasing after Pint Mr. Pinterest. Well, Ms. Ms. Pinterest, sorry. <laughs> of course, there's got to have a little bit of everybody. And uh, you're never going to quite catch up. It's a little bit too much multitasking, you know, going on here. So you do want to focus. So my main focus is um, LinkedIn. And as I said, you're all with me on my journey as I um, delve into the world of attraction marketing. Okay. And I'm not so much doing it. Well, I am. I, I do continue to bring highlights from my course. And I've just, I've got my course going. I just need to tape all of my lectures. So that's going to be really, really fun. But no, I'll do it. It's no problem. But um, yeah. So before I get started, I wanted to also bring up a feature technique, the feature technique of the day. And it's a strategy by, I wrote down Pat Flynn, but I is it Mark Flynn? Mark Flynn? Or Ma you see, I'm just getting to know all of the top influencers. So I'm sorry, I may, I'm making a mistake here. But anyway, he talked about his one 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 strategy and the one 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 strategy consists of working with a single person you're let's say you're just starting out as an empowerment uh entrepreneur 
And when I refer to the word uh, empowerment entrepreneurs, I mean, this entails or yeah, it includes um, life coaches, personal development coaches, professional development coaches, leadership coaches, leadership trainers, um, you know, there's so many different words for this particular where I and I'm including people who work with well health, health and well-being. Keep moving, keep, even with the mistakes, keep going with health and well-being, with fitness, with health, general physical health. Um, you know, anyone who is working with trying to improve, helping, guiding people to find the, 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 the champion that they are, because we are all champions, we're all winners, everyone is. So don't let anybody put you down and get into that imposter dot a lot, a lot, okay? So getting back to the 111 strategy is you are going to find a person Okay, you're going to look for a client, your first client. What you need to do is find someone who has a problem you can solve. Okay, so you don't really want to go out and hang up your sign, hang the sign up yet, because you still need to iron out the kinks. Nothing's going to be perfect. Sometimes you're you know, you're a student yourself. Like I was saying, my first French teacher, she didn't speak French. She was learning French herself. And I really have to appreciate her for sharing a really, um, you know, uh, what do I want to say, um, important uh, life, in, life changing uh, skill. Parce que je parle le français, j'habitais en France depuis beaucoup de ans. J'ai étudié à l'école, à l'université de Nice. Parlo anche italiano. Hablo espagnol. Falo portugais. <laughs> I like to say that. Falo portugais. Uh, toi noi tien viet. And so I don't speak all of these languages completely fluently. I study just about every night because it's very relaxing for me. It's a relaxing exercise to keep up because French and Italian are my strongest languages. Then my reading comprehension of Portuguese is even better than Spanish. And then when it comes to Vietnamese, um, you know, that has, it's a complete, the root language root, everything is so new, but it is a fun language to learn. So, yeah. But anyway, that, her sharing her developing knowledge of French made a difference in my life, for example, even though she had an accent that would Oh boy. But that's okay. That's okay. I'm sure it got better. You got to start somewhere. You got to try. So, so many people don't want to try. They don't want to, you know, they're afraid that they're not going to be good enough or it's not going to be uh, really polished and professional. And, you know, I'm going to get to what we were going to talk about today. I'm back on, you know, in terms of um, attraction marketing, what I, my um, topic for today was branding, branding. And so before you take it on the road, you really have to get your brand, really settle, settle into your brand. Settle into your brand. I was listening to Chris Doe uh, today, and he said, don't be afraid. He says, don't be intentional. Be authentic. 
don't try to be so polished. You have this really professional, look at where I am. I'm in my sleeping loft. And <laughs> I moved into the guest bedroom because I said, well, I won't have to make up the bed every day and then re, uh, re make it up. So I'm up here and this is where I'm teaching. And yes, I have a nude. I have several nudes. I have one over here and there she's, she's topless. And then this one, you know, she's covered, but Hey, you've seen this kind of stuff before, so I'm leaving it there. That's who I am. I'm unconventional. And, you know, on LinkedIn, you know, I tell you how sometimes I have a hard time. And I do, I do spend time, which is important. You need to comment on influencers, people who you want to be like, like Shane Moray and Shankar uh, Ponciet. I believe he may be uh, un peu français, but I don't know. My French accent isn't that. Well, it, it comes and goes. You know how it is with languages. But yeah, so in terms of the branding is you want to set the stage of how you interact with others. Uh, Christo had mentioned how some people just, they're just not nice. I mean, you go to their store and they're not friendly. There's people, they seem like they've got some kind of chip on their shoulder or you think maybe they don't like like black people or something or you know <laughs> you get a funny feeling and that is their brand that is their brand and some people who are kind of mean and grouchy they actually are quite likable because that's who they are that's who they are now being rude is something else for example let me uh, give you an example of what happened to me the other day. I went down to the courthouse because I actually have a lawsuit going. And I always give names because I feel like the only way we're going to get over this uh, institutional racism is by calling out the people who are doing this. And just, we got to just say it. And it's on there, it's on LinkedIn and everything, but against Providence uh, Health and Services for discrimination. And I'll talk about that case. I'll talk about it, but not tonight. But anyway, I went to the courthouse and um, one of the clerk's assistants, she was a little snippy and snooty, but I just let it go. I, I just said, oh, whatever, you know. And so I go back because I had an appointment to call some people. And uh, she was like, you'll just have to wait. I'll show you how to fill out this summons, but you'll just have to wait. And I was like, okay, but I'm at a parking meter. And in order to get into the federal courthouse, you have to walk through a maze because they're doing all of this construction. So you have to park, walk all the way down to the end of the block, walk back up through the maze and all the way into, and then you have to go through security and all that. And so I thought, should I go put more money in the parking meter and go through this whole thing again? I only had, I had about half an hour that I had to meet some people. So I said, well, I told her, I'm, I think I'll be okay. And so I thought that they had given me the wrong documents. And so I called and I said, oh, I think the um, assistant gave me the wrong the wrong information and oh, she made copies and now I'm going to have to buy more copies because they charge you for copies. And so she was uh, so rude. She says, um, well, the case is this many pages and we can't do anything. And, and um, 
you know, we would prefer if you made your own copies. Now, I didn't ask anyone to make copies for me. The other assistant made copies uh, and then I paid for them. And so she goes, and we would prefer that you didn't make cop that we that you made your own copies. We're not a copy place. And she said that at least three times. And I said, oh, okay, well, I never asked anybody to make copies. And I said, if I knew that, I would have happily made the copies because I have a place I can make copies free. And uh, then she goes on and she's like, just, just saying, oh, just so rude and so snippy. And finally I said, okay, thanks. I understand everything now. I have the documents. I'm just gonna go ahead and make more copies and I'll send that off and then I'll come back with the summons. And she said something snippy. And I said, oh, you know, you are a little rude. I kind of said it trying to be a little light. And she goes, that's because you refuse to understand what I'm trying to explain to you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you don't have to be rude like that. I said, let me speak to your supervisor because she said, yeah. And I said, can I just speak to your supervisor? He's not available. And I said, well, I am going to call back and talk to your supervisor about this conversation. And she goes, bye, bye, bye. And I just stood there, I didn't say anything. And then finally I said, what a rude person. And she hung up the phone. Oh my goodness. And so I called back and I tried to talk to the supervisor and he wasn't available. So I did leave a message and then I never heard anything back. And so uh, the next week I called and I talked, left a message with another supervisor. And this is at the US Courthouse District of Oregon, Multnomah County, neither Neither supervisor has acknowledged me, neither. And I left messages, asked them to call and left my phone number. So my only option now is to make it part of my court record and send it to the judge. So this is I, this has got a couple of fold, all right? Because this is an example of storytelling, and then it's an example of a brand. So that office, the clerk's office, the uh, in the federal government, um, in Portland, Oregon, where I am for the moment, because I'm heading back to Southeast Asia fairly soon. That is their brand. That's the impression they're giving of a brand. You see, you have a rude, unprofessional staff. Then you have supervisors that do not follow up. That's a brand. Okay. So I just want to, you know, give you guys some ideas. And, you know, think about it. Think about the way attraction marketing is all about emotion. It's about, it's an emotion. It's not about like triggering emotion, but it's to create a feeling in someone. And so the way you treat people, the way you engage with people, the fact that you do engage with people and you don't just treat your uh, audience as followers, but as a community, make them feel like they matter. Make them know that you care. You know, the way people treat, people remember these things. They'll remember that. So you, it's a, there's room for everybody. Everybody can sell, uh, you know, what Louis Vuitton bags, or everybody can sell textbooks, or everybody can sell shoes. 
but who are you going, who are you attracted to? Who makes you feel special? People who remember people's names. You know, there was one guy who I bought like three cars from because I drive, well, my I bought like two to three sobs from him. I don't know, you know, but not, not at the same time. You know, yeah, I, 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 I've never even been able to truly, well, I always buy stuff cash. So I have never bought a, a brand new car. I can't see myself laying down 90, 95,000, but I'm, I will one day. <laughs> yes, I do. But, um, you know, who, yeah. Sid was his name, or is his name, and because this was back in the day, but you know, he whenever I went there, hey, Marsha, how are you? How is it going? And then the phone would ring, and he would go, hello. Oh, Barry? Barry, how are you? Wow. And he was just so excited. People just made him like so happy. And he was just bursting, bursting with happiness. But I'm sure that was part of his shtick too. But so remember, please think about the way, what kind of feelings you want to um, elucid. Elucid? Elicit. Not elucid. Elicit. Yeah, yeah, I'm a doctor. Yeah, I'm a doctor. But I'm not a doctor of, uh, you know, Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> no, I'm a doctor of business administration. And I did a research project, and I'm an expert in that. I'm not an expert in all business. So don't come asking me everything because you know there's just too much stuff too much too much too much so just find one or two things and focus on that become an expert in that don't try to be an expert on everything don't say oh i have an mba well i have a dba but i have an mba therefore i know everything about business projects i mean processes and um Biz, uh, what um, business process improvement? I know it all. I know it all because you don't. If everything's developing so fast, but anyway, so that's basically what I wanted to touch on. Yeah, and uh, the supervisor is here. You know, Huggy Bear is the sweetest kitty, but they, they don't like to be picked up. But, oh, what a fluffy kitty. Yes. So anyway, oh, yeah. And next time I'm running out of time. You know, I don't, ah, I just got, he just bit me. I say he and she back and forth or whatever. But I will talk a little bit about how I became, decided to become an entrepreneur, okay? And I was going to talk a little bit about it tonight, but I'm running out of time. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a little sneak preview. It had to do with being bullied out of my career, out of my, my livelihood, um, had my uh reputation ruined i um and it was it it was unfairly and it was dishonestly done and um yeah i got blacklisted i got black blot bl uh, okay why you gotta be black okay i got blacklisted from research, working in research in Oregon. And the culprit is Kaiser Permanente Center for Health Research because I name names. Okay, I name names. 
And but anyway, I'm not gonna be like, but I will talk about you know because workplace bullying is devastating. It's like ridiculously devastating. It takes people years, years to get to where they can go to work again, where they can be around people, where they have confidence in themselves, you know? So um, I'm going to spend time talking about that, but I'm not going to talk about it in like a, you know, like a resentful way or anything like that, because the people, that's their brand. You see, that's their brand. That's not my brand. That's their brand. So, you know, I don't do people. You know, I just won't do it. I would never. I don't see how people could do that at some of these job sites where a supervisor says, I want you to start watching uh, what time Ken comes to work. What time does he clock in? And you let me know if he's late. And it's like, I I don't get your $120, $170 uh, $170,000 dollar salary i'm not going to spy on my colleagues but a lot of people are happy to do it only too happy and usually they end up eventually for sure you know it they are going to end up getting the boot themselves eventually right Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's how that goes. Um, yeah. So people, winners, keep winning, keep winning. Follow the line. You see that finish line? It's there. You see it? Think. Guided imagery. Do it. All right. Okay, I'm gonna let you go. Be sure to um yeah i might as well do a little well no 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 because i i'm attraction marketing so i'm not gonna tell you i'm not gonna tell you to subscribe to my youtube i'm not gonna do that no am i gonna tell you to follow me on linkedin no no way so (laughs) anyway let's I would like to connect with people who I can learn from. So if I could learn from you, let's connect. And I I will reach out. Okay. Well, have a great night. And I'll see you tomorrow night. And uh, have a good day at work tomorrow. <laughs> Bye-bye. Or ciao, ciao.